Welcome to our lecture online. In the previous two videos, we saw how to find the angle required to reach a certain distance with a projectile that's fired at a particular initial velocity. But in those examples, the case was that the height of the projectile when it started was the same as the height of the projectile when it finished. In this case, we're going to do the general solution to find the angle required to reach a certain distance if the height of projectile is different when it starts than when it finishes. So it starts at initial height h. So how do we find the angle required for the projectile to reach a certain distance? Well, obviously we'll still need the initial velocity in the y direction, the initial velocity in the x direction of the projectile, which of course can be calculated like this. The start of that problem will be exactly the same as the start of the more benign case, where the heights are the same, we're going to find the time in the air for both the x and the y direction. So time in the air for the y direction, again we use that same equation, y equals y sub naught plus v sub naught in the y direction times time plus one half g t squared. By now we should be very familiar with that equation. Time in the air for the x direction, we use the same equation except with the difference that there's no acceleration in the x direction because there's no force of gravity acting in that direction and we'll assume that the initial distance x sub naught is going to be equal to zero which means that the simplified equation looks like x equals v initial in the x direction times time. We only get the middle term, we don't get the first or the third term. The way we solve these types of problems is we need to eliminate the variable t. We are not given the time and therefore if we solve this equation for t and then plug that into the t and t squared over here, we can eliminate that variable. First of all, the v initial in the x direction, let's write that, what that's equal to in terms of the angle. x equals v initial times the cosine of theta times t. And then of course what we can do here is say that t is equal to that would be x divided by v initial times the cosine of theta. And we're going to take this expression and substitute into t and t squared there. Before we do that, we also need to change v initial in the y direction by what that's equal to in terms of the angle. After all, we're looking for the angle. So we can say here, and let me go ahead and plug in the other things as well, because we know that the final height is zero, but the initial height will be h. So this becomes 0 is equal to h plus v initial in the y direction, which is v initial times the sine of theta times t. And here we're going to take the negative of the 9.8 meters per second squared. Remember, g in projectile motion is always a negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So we'll go ahead and take that negative, put it in front, and now this g becomes a positive 9.8 meters per second squared. So here we're going to write g equals positive 9.8 meters per second squared. And now we realize that this g is positive even though typically g is negative. We've already taken the negative and placed it there. Now we can go ahead and substitute this into here and here and see what we get. 0 is equal to h plus v initial times the sine of theta, and instead of t, we write x divided by v initial times the cosine of theta minus one half g, and again, t is x, and since it's squared, we get x squared divided by v initial squared times the cosine squared of theta. And we can, yes, get rid of v initials. Now, unfortunately, in this case, we cannot eliminate x and x here like we did in the previous equation when the heights were the same. Now we have this extra term, the extra constant term there, which indeed makes things a little bit more complicated. The initial approach is going to be the same. Let's get rid of the cosine of theta in the denominator by multiplying both sides of the equation by cosine of theta squared. So, of course, the left side is zero, nothing changes there. So this equation becomes zero is equal to h times the cosine square of theta. Here, the cosine disappears, we get plus x times sine of theta times the cosine of theta. 
And here, the cosine squared of theta disappears, and we get minus, in the numerator, gx squared, and in the denominator, we get 2v sub naught squared. Now, to make things easier to work with, we're going to do a quick substitution. We're going to replace this quantity here by some constant, let's simply call it a. We're going to let a equals this right here, gx squared divided by 2v sub naught squared. When we do that, the equation simply looks cleaner. Now we get 0 is equal to, oh, and by the way, one more thing. Instead of writing the cosine square of theta, we're going to write this as 1 minus the sine square of theta. So this becomes h times 1 minus the sine square of theta plus x times sine of theta cosine of theta, and here this becomes minus a. Notice that it's a whole lot cleaner when we write it like that. Now you may say, well, why in the world did I write cosine square of theta? Well, the reason is I know that I can rewrite this in terms of sine of 2 theta using the double angle equation, and then I can get rid of cosine out of my equation altogether. Well, at least for now. Let's see what happens. So the next thing, I'm going to multiply this out. So we have 0 is equal to h minus h times the sine square of theta plus x times the sine of theta times the cosine of theta minus a. And now I can combine these two terms, these constant terms. Let me come up here. Hopefully I have enough board space. So now this becomes 0 is equal to minus h times the sine square of theta plus x times the sine of theta times the cosine of theta and moving the h to the other side we get plus h minus a so there's a constant term remember a was equal to this quantity right there so here it takes a little bit of forethought if i'm going to rewrite this using the double angle identity we get zero is equal to i'll leave this one alone and here this can be written as plus x times one half the sine of two theta. And then we still have the constant term h minus a here. What should I do with this? Now it turns out the sine square of theta can be rewritten as one half times one minus the cosine of two theta, and then I end up with the cosine of two theta here and the sine of two theta. Now that may be easier to work with, so that's the trick we're going to use. We're going to write this as minus h over 2 times 1 minus the cosine of 2 theta. So now that we have 2 theta here and 2 theta there, even though we have a cosine and a sine, we're at least now able to work with that, because after all, we're trying to isolate the angle theta. And, of course, here we have a minus h over 2, and here we have a plus h, if we then move this over here, we end up with the following. We end up with 0 is equal to this minus times this minus cancel out. And we have h over 2 times the cosine of 2 theta. Here we have plus x over 2 times the sine of 2 theta. And then bringing this over here, we subtract a half h from that. So we get plus h over 2 minus a. And there's our constant term. And of course, we see all the divide by 2 everywhere, so let's multiply both sides of the equation by 2, simplify it a little bit more. We get 0 is equal to h times the cosine of 2 theta plus x times the sine of 2 theta plus h minus 2a. And there's still my constant term. Now at this point, it's as far as we can go as far as simplifying the equation, but now we can realize that when we have something like this, we can actually write this as the function of a single angle, or I should say as a single function, single trigonometric function. We can say, and let's see here, I'm going to put it up here. If we have something that looks like a times the sine of, mm, let's say, alpha, I'll use a different angle, plus b times the cosine of alpha, this can actually be written as r, I'm just going to write it as r, times the cosine of alpha 
minus a phase angle. So that's what happens if we add two functions, the sine and the cosine together, we can actually turn that into a single trigonometric function. The only difference is that r is going to be equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared, and the angle phi is equal to the arctangent of a over b. So using that principle, when we add two trigonometric functions together, what that means is in this case, we can say that this here can be rewritten in that form. We can say 0 is equal to the square root of a h squared plus x squared times the cosine of 2 theta minus the phase angle plus h minus 2a, can't forget my constant term, and where the phase angle here, the phase angle is equal to the arc tangent of, now be careful here, we have the number in front of the sine of theta on top and the number in front of the cosine theta on the bottom, but notice here that the cosine is written first, so we have to write this as x over h. Now we're almost there. What we're going to do now is isolate this. So we're going to write this on the other side. And notice when we move this to the other side, we switch the signs. So we end up with, I'm going to write this here. So we have the cosine of 2 theta minus phi is equal to, moving this to the other side of the equation becomes negative. So we'll switch that around. We get 2a minus h. And then we divide it by the coefficient of the cosine, which is the square root of h squared plus x squared. And finally, to get the angle, we can say that 2 theta minus phi is going to be equal to the arc cosine, the inverse cosine of this quantity right here, which is 2a minus h divided by h squared plus x squared. And you know what? At this point, I may want to go ahead and replace a by this quantity right there. So let me go ahead and do that all at once because as you can see, I'm definitely out of board space. So finally, we can write that 2 theta minus phi is going to be equal to the arc cosine, the inverse cosine of 2 times a, but since this is divided by 2, the 2's cancel out. So we end up with gx squared over v initial square minus h divided by the square root of h squared plus x squared. And that is the equation that will allow us to find the unknown angle. Now, notice phi will have to be determined by this. So you need to find phi, plug that in here. So 2 theta minus some number, some angle in degrees is going to go here. Then you take the arc cosine of this quantity. And then, of course, you have to say if 2 theta minus the number is equal to that, then theta will be, well, you can do the algebra from that point out. But that's the equation you need to solve for the angle. And notice it takes quite a bit of work to come up with that equation. But that's how it's done.